I liked the FNAF movie. Even as a casual fan who doesn't understand too much of the lore besides the basics, I enjoyed the movie and the crazy amount of references to the games that there were. That being said, I want to shed light on some things that I personally didn't enjoy in the movie. And this is no shade to the creators or anything. This is just my opinion on things that would have made my viewing experience better personally. Also, obviously, spoiler warning, if you haven't seen it, go see it. Okay, let me just start by saying the fucking cupcake was so dumb holy shit i love the practical effects the movie had with the main four animatronics but the cgi on the cupcake was just like laughably bad in my opinion as well as the fact that the cupcake in the first game couldn't even attack you it sat on your freaking desk i didn't even mind that much that it was getting kills or screen time or that it was a you know one of the kids whatever i personally just didn't like that it was overshadowing the main four characters including fucking freddy who the movie is named after i mean i really just want to see a comparison split between the cupcake's screen time compared to the other four main animatronics that people actually care about. It just looked goofy, like it wasn't scary at all when it was biting people. And I get it, My I should have lowered my expectations when it came to the whole horror part of this film. The cupcake was not doing it for me at all, and the fact that it was the main thing attacking the protagonist was really jarring. And you know, speaking of screen time, where the fuck was Matthew Lillard in this movie? If I'm being 100% honest, he was one of the main factors that even got me excited about seeing this movie in production. I loved him in Scream, and you know, he plays a mean Shaggy in Scooby-Doo. Even those two roles by themselves, not including anything else, just shows how wide of a range of characters he can play so well. So why was he only in the movie for five fucking minutes? Like, holy shit this pissed me off the most out of any other problem I had with this movie because first of all they treated him as a twist movie villain when it was so obvious that he was gonna end up being the bad guy first of all anyone that saw him get cast knew that he was gonna be William Rapton second of all in the movie he reads Mike Schmidt's name and when he gets to the last name he realizes that it's his younger brother and his attitude completely changes Michael Sh Coffee? It was so obvious and they hyped up his reveal at the end when he took off the head as if it, we didn't know it was gonna be him. Like, who else in the movie could it have been? I wish they just took into account that 99% of their audience is not stupid and knew that he was going to be the killer instead of making it seem like, oh, we're just going to put him in this first part and you'll remember him when he's back at the end of the movie an hour and a half later. Like, we could have kept tabs on him throughout the movie. Like, maybe show him when he kidnapped Garrett. Maybe show him talking to Vanessa. Maybe show him keeping tabs on Mike. You could have done so many things to just sprinkle him throughout the movie at little points. And instead, it's just, you get this one scene of him in the office and you get this one scene of him at the end trying to kill Mike. It is so frustrating because he's such a talented actor and I love the way he portrayed William and the little moments we got him in. It was just a little ridiculous. And like even if you wanted to keep him a twist villain, you could just maybe have a scene of him on the phone with a mysterious person who we end up figuring out is Vanessa, his daughter. Or have a scene of him checking in on Mike in a sincere way. And like, oh, it's just you could have done so many more things and instead like, oh, Ryan's my gears that he was just not in this movie at all, even though he is probably the most established and respected actor on that set. I just hope that in future movies, they give him the screen time he deserves because this shit was wild. The third problem I had with this movie, Vanessa. When I saw that Elizabeth Lale was in the trailer, I got a little excited because one of my favorite shows in recent memory is You on Netflix, and she plays one of the main characters in season one, and she is really good at it, and that's the first time I've seen her personally act, but I got really excited because I was like, oh, okay, I get to see more of this actor that I pre previously enjoyed. And to her credit, I don't think that she did a bad job. I think that they wrote her character just horribly. Like she was so confusing and personally annoying to me. And I know I was watching with somebody else and they were also annoyed. Her character left so many questions. Like does she actually work for the police? If so, how come she never turned in her father? And if it's because he intimidates her, then why does she go and try to save Mike after knowing him for three days? I just don't understand her character at all or her motivations and why she only tells Mike these little bits of information that fully add up instead of just telling him all at once if she's gonna do that anyway. It just makes no sense to me. There's literally a scene where he questions her and he's like, why do you know all this? And she's like, don't worry about it. Don't bring your sister by here ever again or I'll shoot you. Like, it's just, why? Who the hell are you? Someone who's trying to help. And she goes, trust me, like he's supposed to trust her after knowing her for like two seconds. I didn't. And then she gets mad at him for not trusting her when obviously she's hiding something and he's suspicious. Like, what does she think is gonna happen? It just felt lazy and like she wasn't actually trying to hide or hint at anything that she knew. She was just blatantly like, yeah, I know these things, but I'm not gonna tell you why. And I'm not gonna tell you the things you want in it. I don't even know if we were supposed to like her as an audience. For me personally, I just found her annoying and confusing. And when it came to her character on screen, I just, I was not a fan 
Ryan and Vanessa. And finally, I'll make this one brief. I think the movie should have been rated R. There aren't many kills to begin with, and I guess that's just kind of FNAF in general. In the games themselves, I guess the only person who really dies is the security guard and maybe the phone guy. And when we even do get the kills in the movie, almost all of them are off screen, which kind of sucks. And even the one that is kind of on screen, where the chick gets bitten, it looks really fake. Like, not even that's supposed to look real, but it just looks really stupid the way her body just kind of, it just looks dumb. And it really sucks because I think the practicals were really cool. Like, a scene that really got me and gave me chills was when Mike came across the bodies of the people who broke in. And, like, they actually look not fake and they don't look stupid and it's an actual scary scene in the movie that really heightens up the tension of the finale. And I just wish that they did more with that and the kills that actually were in the movie were a little more something because right now they're all kind of off screen and the one that wasn't really off screen was kind of very mid in my opinion. I think this movie being radar would really heighten the tension, especially in the climax of the movie and just simply would make it a better movie all around. And I get they're trying to appeal to like the younger audience, you know, I guess teenagers like FNAF, but in my opinion, most kids shouldn't be watching the movie anyway, and the teenagers that do like it would definitely still find a way to watch it even though it's rated R. And also, a lot of the OG FNAF fans, this game came out 10 years ago. I mean, I personally was in middle school, and now I'm a freshman in college, and I know there are people older than me that liked the game, so like, a lot of the original FNAF fans are old enough to go see a rated R movie. This is definitely like nitpicky, and I know that it doesn't need to be rated R, it's just, once again, a personal kind of bias. Overall, I really did like the FNAF movie, it was really cool seeing that this game that started from nothing has evolved to a big screen film and is already coming out with a second one. And as a pretty casual fan who doesn't know too much about the lore these days and just knows the main kind of first four games, I would give the movie a solid 7 out of 10. Anyway, thanks for watching. Have a good day. I'll see you eventually. Peace.